What's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, well, I, I, I don't need to ask how you doing. We're all doing horrible right now, and I understand that. But uh, it's your homeboy, Cowboy Crunk, your war daddy, the only war daddy we got for the Cowboys now, because nobody really is performing well. Uh, a little props to Dak. I think I think he's played all right. He hasn't played. There there has been some some situations. I think he could have done some things better. But but I think with what he's being handed. That the guy's taking care of business, guys. I wanted to say I apologize for kind of disappearing. Uh, some people think, hey, maybe he's on his way to, to Bahrain and all these things. No, I haven't started that yet. Right now, nothing's going on for me but football. But there's an old saying, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. So I had to kind of shut the, I kind of had to shut the fuck up for a while because I've been pretty pissed. And I don't want anybody, you know, I know everybody's tired of the harping and the harping, but I got some educated, what I think are educated reasons why this has been going down. And and it, it, it starts from the top. There's a lack of leadership somewhere. I, I, I know that these guys will follow Dak into the fire, right? I feel that. But but when when certain players, I think, are 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 you know working their self and and trying to get their self into the mix and trying to get things uh i think a team team concept can can kind of get lost i think that's what's going on on defense because you know we talk about the hot boys we talk about the purge squad and, and all those things and and something's not clicking there our, our defense is not clicking the way it should be um if you guys know in the preseason how many names did we have popping up Byron Jones and uh, uh, Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch and all these names, all these high-profile names, nobody's doing shit. None of them guys are doing shit. Out, out of all those guys, I'd say Byron Jones has probably had the, the best season other than, than uh, Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn's on fire, man. He's the only one, and we just got we just picked him up. Think where it would be if we hadn't picked him up. We've seen nothing from the defensive tackle position. We've seen... We've seen nothing from our edge rushers other than Robert Quinn. We don't even hear we don't even hear Demarcus Lawrence's name being called in the game. There's not even any hurries going on. And and the other thing is when when this on the snap of the ball, uh, Dak Prescott sees nothing but Travis Frederick ass right in his face. Travis Frederick, uh, uh, Zach Martin, and and Connor Williams. If you watch that game, I, I watched the game a couple times already. From yesterday. Now I've been pissed off since the Saints game because it, it just it looked like there was a lack of there was a lack of interest or something. It, it looked like nothing was there. Have we even seen uh, Zeke had a couple good runs in the game? We haven't seen him do his you know his his feed me thing. He's not doing that shit anymore. Something is something is going on in the locker room. I'm telling you guys, it it it, it starts at the top and. I love Jason Garrett as a speaker. Man, he can and when the game's over, he can talk his do his thing and he sounds so good. But those guys are not following him right now. Those guys are not wanting to hear what he has to say. They're tired of tired of hearing we all heard it. We heard the same shit over and over and the game is over and the way he talks and the things he says and you know we just got to work a little harder and you know next man up and the next man up shit ain't working. I mean shit, we had two our two tackles out. We had our three, basically three of our top receivers out. Uh, at least Gallup was there. You know, I, I put him as our number two, but Cobb is probably our one of our hardest working receivers. Him and Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin is a working ass beast, man. You can talk to even the, the defensive players respect Tavon Austin, and and they wanted to put him in the hot boy list because it's a work ethic thing. But something's going on that, that there's shit missing right now. Uh, and that's why I've been quiet, guys. It has nothing to do with, oh, you know, if the Cowboys aren't winning, I'm not there. No, it has nothing to do with that. I've been there. I've been there so damn much. I haven't had time to do this. I've been watching the games. I've been looking at shit. I've been reading shit. I've been watching other videos. I've been I've been looking at the garbage things on the Internet. And I've, I've been looking uh, at the things that aren't garbage, you know, kind of reading things and, and getting different ideas. I've been watching ESPN. I've been watching Skip Bayless. And some of these guys I don't even normally watch, I'm trying to figure shit out. Because something's not right. And we got the players to be doing this. We have the roster. And this roster's not performing. And that's why i kind of been like, if you can't say nothing nice, shut the fuck up. And that's where I've been. I've been away. I've been pissed. 
I've been depressed about it, but but I have not forgotten you guys. I know y'all are in the same place, but but I'm not gonna get out there and make videos and, and, and run shit down and run this around. I'm I'm here for for that for this shit right here, bro. That's what I'm here for. And when that's not coming, when it don't look like it's coming, I get pissed. And maybe I, you know, crawl under the bed a little bit and I, I don't crawl under the bed and hide. I crawl under the bed and get depressed and pissed off. And when I come out, which I, I'm coming out today, I'm pissed. All kinds of things. D-Law, Vanderesh, Smith. And, and we got Robert Quinn, the only one performing on the defense. Um, and, and, and I will say we were in a worse position last year. To get where we were last year, we would have to lose the next two games in a row again, basically. We, we did go 3-0, and but we were, remember last year at one point we were 3-5, and and we made those changes, and, and you know, we got Cooper in. We made the change on the offensive line, and those things, those things made a big difference. But there were so many plays in this game. We don't make plays on the ball on defense. I do not see the guys trying to rip the ball out. When we go to tackle, we go to tackle, we rip up, uh, we, we, we wrap up, and we, we pull them down. You watch any other damn team in the NFL, when a, when a cornerback or a safety or a linebacker gets in there, Jalen Smith is about the only one I've seen do it this year. When he goes to wrap up, he tries to rip that ball out, and you'll see their arm fly up like a damn cowboy uh, when, they're, when they're riding a bull. You'll see that arm fly up. They're trying to rip the ball out. We're not even doing any of that. I don't know where this is coming from. We... The only interceptions we have this year are when, when it's a horrible throw and it goes right to our defensive player. We don't have our defensive players, uh, you know, sneaking in, a, snafe, a safety sneaking in in front of a receiver and taking a pick. Uh, the, the one Jordan Lewis had last night was, was just thrown right to him. At, at Let me see. At, at four, in the fourth quarter, 14 minutes and 10 seconds in the fourth quarter, an interception was thrown directly to Cheeto, Cheeto Bayouzie. And he, he missed it. He jumped up. It was kind of high. One of those same things we keep saying, you know, if it hits your hands, it's, you should catch it. And I don't always believe in that because when you're turning back and a ball's coming at you quick, you may not have time to get your hands back. And we've had Dak throw some interceptions on those situations too. Dak has trouble hitting people coming across the middle. And, and he, he's not really good on the timing. He actually, to me, does a lot better on the deep ball. So why are we not throwing the deep ball? Why is it all always all this shit across the middle and, and, and we're behind him? Uh, we're, he's always behind him. He's never out in front of him. So other than that, he's done a great job. I, I, I believe in Dak. I think he's going to come around. I, I think he's even there. I Not come around. He's there. He's not going to – every throw is not going to be perfect. But, but another thing is the pass interference. Uh, when, when Witten had the TD, okay, that was a horrible call. We know that that was a four-point loss right there. Then you got, then you got, uh, which we have nothing to do with that. That that was the officials. Uh, that that was, if you if, as a receiver, if you run up into the defender, and and you make contact with the defender that's defending you, and the defender that's covering the other receiver co comes into you, that has nothing to do with you. I mean, that, that was one-on-one. -on -one. Their defender ran into that should have been That should have been a touchdown. That moved us back. Another issue was clock management at the end of the game, which I do put on Jason Garrett. And, and actually, I'm putting 90% of this on Jason Garrett. The leadership is not there to get these guys fired up. They're not getting fired up right, and the preparation is not there. It's something to do with the preparation and, and getting fired up for the game and being prepared because we get a shitty start every start of the game and we got to come back and Dak has almost done it we score at the end of the second quarter and we score at the end of the fourth quarter every time every fucking time we score when we have to when they say Dak just take it down and score here's this shit but when we come in and we meticulously try to walk the ball down and here's these plays and run this shit and run here we go Dak do this and, and we're handing Dak these sticky notes on shit to do it's a sticky note here run that here's here's the next play run that it's the shit is not working they got to be more aggressive. They got to let Dak do what he can do. The run play at the end was horrible. Uh, um, not, not the one for the uh, for the two-point conversion. That was just completely horrible. They could have. They should have. I say they should have called a timeout when they when they saw the Jets line up for that two-point conversion at the end of the game, and they saw that the, that that the house was fucking coming. They should have called a timeout. They should have called a timeout just like if you were preparing to kick a field goal to ice the kicker. 
you take a look at the defense, you call a timeout, you go back in, you know, and of course they maybe they come out with something different, but it, at least you got to look at the defense. You get a chance to relax, you get a chance to calm down and and see, you know, if if they just come bring the house, you you put you put Jason Witten out you know, a little further out, not in the middle of the field, and, and throw him a jump ball, something. But but what they did was completely horrible on that on the the two point conversion play. Um, another thing, um, the when when all of those penalties were coming through at the end of the game, we were down, we were down inside the ten. We were at the ten yard line with a minute and forty seconds left. And all of those damn penalties, starting with the Connor Williams hold, which I'm kind of proud of the guy. He only had one today uh, or yesterday. Um, that started a chain reaction of shit that, that we just, it ran the clock down. Yeah, we scored, but it ran the clock down to where we had to kick the onside kick because that horrible ass two-point conversion attempt we had. That, that, was, that was pathetic. If you can't come up with something better than that, you should have one of those in your pocket at all times. At all times, you should have a play in your pocket. And with, with all the penetration they were getting right up the middle from Connor Williams, Zach Martin, and Travis Frederick, I hate to say it, something's going on up there. I don't think Travis Frederick is the same. Guys, I'm telling you, you can watch it. You can watch it. When you watch it on the condensed version like this, it's the snap, back backs up, and the whole defense, the whole offensive line is right in his lap. The whole offensive, the whole center of the offensive line. And you watch the Jets. When the Jets did that, we were not getting that push at all. Uh, Donald, Donald had all kinds of room in front of him to step up and throw the ball. Every time Dak is thrown off of his back foot or he's having to step up and try to, try to make a run between the tackle and the guard or he's trying to get outside because every time the whole line just collapsed into his lap. So I don't know what's going on there up front. Um, you know, the horse collar that Malik Collins had there at the end, uh, Van Der Esch and Heath were right there to make the tackle. There was, there was no use in doing that. That was third down. That would have stopped them. That would have put a field goal on the, on the, uh, scoreboard instead of a touchdown. So we just had a lot of little plays that, uh, Cheeto Bay Awuzie, man, uh, he's another one of the names there's some names I'm name dropping, but he has not had a good season. It just has not been there. Uh, at times last year, he played great. Uh, I, you know, like I said, a few times last year, uh, off the videos that I, that I compiled over the, the, the offseason, we had the least amount of pass interference uh, penalties last year for yardage. We had the least amount of yards and the least amount of pass interference. And this year, it, it just, it's not going that way. I don't know what's different. It's something motivational because there's too many players that are not performing that should be. Um, and and it, that involves Zeke as well. Zeke is pounding the rock, but the yards are not there. We have not seen a dynamic run. We haven't seen one of those dynamic runs with a hurdle at the end. We haven't seen anything fantastic out of him. And it's too late in the season not to see that. So I'm going to take this, uh, you know, and 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 get rid of it. It's a wash. Uh, I ran my mouth. Like I said, if you ain't got nothing to say, don't say nothing at all. But I, I couldn't hold back anymore. Uh, I'm not going to sit on my channel and not do anything and not communicate with you guys and not let you know what I'm feeling and have people thinking, oh, you know, Cowboy Crunk uh, ran off and uh, we're not winning. So, you know, this shit, that shit. No, that's not what it is, man. Uh, I'm extremely upset with this shit and we got to fix it. Um, and, and, and Jason Garrett's got to get fired up. He's got to fire these guys up. Something, this is when it, it just comes down to maybe he's been there too long, you know? Like the Tomlin thing. Mike Tomlin, maybe Mike Tomlin's been with the Steelers too long. And, and it, it's just not working anymore. I think after a coach is there a certain amount of time and he has not produced, players stop, stop, you know, stop wanting to listen to that shit over and over so we'll see her this where this goes guys we got a tough game next week uh, i will be in bahrain on the uh 11th uh that's the night of actually it's they're ahead there so we play the miami vikings on the 10th so i'm gonna actually get up around three in the morning i'll be there in the hotel for a couple of days before i'm gonna get up at three in the morning and watch the game there 
But I am good, guys. I am here in Houston still. I'm still banging away, watching my Cowboys, supporting. But I've, I've been kind of undercover because I've had too much to say. But hang in there, guys. Your war daddy, Cowboy Crunk. Let's save the season. We can turn this around, but something's got to fire this shit up from the top. We got to shake the tree, fellas. <laughs>